she always find a good place to sleep and chill. So I did a short today uh, just to say that I may do a video of uh, something that I felt was like really traumatic for me to talk about. So I was telling my daughter that I was gonna do this uh, story time and my daughter Mary told me not to do it because it still makes me cry. I just think right now at this point it's happy tears more than anything. So uh, the story takes place July, 2022. Um, my daughter Carla was uh, going into her freshman year that August, but she was uh, going to the high school just to take, uh, I guess like additional classes just to boost her up in her freshman year. So it's not like me to take a picture of her walking off is that part will go with the story um so i snapshotted the picture of carla and some boy and one of carla friends they were just like all walking and i just like at the back of them um and i think did your dad end up seeing you did he take you in front of the school uh no uh, we see me walking with him oh okay so okay so a, a whole lot has blinked out for me that day but Carlo didn't take Carla to school because she wanted to walk with her friends. So I remember I snapshotted that picture to tease Carlo to say, your daughter's walking with a boy. Anywho, um, so I'm at work doing my work things with the daycare kids and I get a call from the school that's telling me, hey, I haven't seen Carla, uh, none. Like she hasn't been coming to class. So I'm like, well, yeah, she's there. She's been every, she's been there every day. So she was like, well, she didn't check in today. I was like, she's definitely there. Um, you know, I said, just call me back when you like see her name on a roster or whatever. Okay. So the teacher called me back and said, her name is not on the roster. I went to go and ask her Dean. They said she didn't come to school today. So it was like, I immediately just like went in panic mode. So I called Carlo and I was like, they said Carla didn't go to school. She didn't check in. He was like, that's not true. I seen Carla uh, close to the school. So I know she went in the building. She was with her friends. So that was that. So I end up running to the school. We, my work in the high school is probably like, a, I don't know, maybe like a six, seven minute walk maybe right about 10 minutes about okay like a 12 minute walk i literally got to her high school under a minute um first of all like i said i was at work i literally ran out the daycare and i had to come back inside to tell miss brianna the teacher i had to tell her like please just hold the daycare down um I'll, i have to go see what's happening so i get there uh like the dean and Carla's teacher, they meet me in front. I'm like, where's my daughter? And he's like, she didn't, she's not here. We can't find her. And um, I immediately started screaming. This is a huge high school. So I immediately started screaming, where's my baby? Where's my baby? Um, so Carla, Carlo ended up meeting me at the high school. He called the police and the police was there. And I, I just wasn't no good to nobody. Um, my daughter mary i think she was taking a course at the high school too because uh i called mary so mary ended up meeting me at like the welcome center um where i seen the dean and carla's teacher so me and mary both together just like screaming it was so bad we both just like screaming carla i mean mary who's like more reserved and like quiet she was like screaming where's my sister um so uh I'm sorry. So Mary was like screaming, where's my sister? And um, I'm not crying. I've never oh, okay. So uh, the people was just asking us to calm down. Um, it's going to be okay. We're going to find her. And then when I seen the police inside, I was like, oh, hell no. Nah. Y'all got the police. So something really going on. So it's, it was like... Um, I couldn't breathe. They had to like sit me down. I was screaming and screaming. And my daughter Mary was screaming, trying to find her sister. She was like, mom, pray, pray. You always pray. You always tell us to pray. I couldn't find a prayer in me. Like I, I, I was doing fine with the screaming. Um, so we started calling Carla phone and we 
call the little boy phone and we called the girl phone she's with. Nobody was answering a phone. Everybody phone was going to voicemail. So um, I'm screaming still like in a panic mode. They was trying to put ice on me. I'm like, st stop, just don't, don't touch me. It was just like really bad. Um, they was just like, just don't hyperventilate. We don't want you to pass out. Uh, so it was no answer. So again, my daughter Mary was just screaming to me to tell me to pray. So I just got on my knees. First of all, they took us in this like this little room. I don't even know what this room was, but it was like a little room um, where they had me and my daughter in and the dean and a teacher and somebody else. Uh, we just in there, Carla was outside of the room talking with the police. And I got on my knees just praying and screaming, uh, just thanking Jesus and covering my baby, uh, you know, that she'll be found. And I remember both of the women, the teacher and the other teacher, uh, got on their knees and started praying with me in the name of Jesus. And they started pleading the blood of Jesus. It was like, it gave me so much peace and comfort, but still i still was like in so much distraught i was in so much pain and the dean walked inside of the room and i was like where's my daughter where's my daughter he was like miss harris i'm so sorry uh we we haven't uh touched base with her yet and um i was like i need all the janitors i need you to go find up i need you to go round up all the janitors in the building i need to see them so not to disrespect janitors inside of the high school or their schools or whatever but that whole thought of me thinking about a janitor come from all type of movies I done seen with the janitors luring little girls and like the basement and hurting them and just etc. Because my mind took me to like a dark place and it's like I kept trying to pray to get me out of that place and I had my daughter praying, I had the teachers praying um, and I end up calling one of my uh, daycare parents. You know how with your kids school it's like always that one parent who like assign the parties and that I do, do all of the stuff that the teacher's not doing. So that's what this parent did for me. I was like, please call all the parents so everybody can come get their kids because I'm, I'm not going back to the daycare. It was really bad. And so she asked me what was going on. She asked me what was going on. She ended up coming up to the, um, to the high school to be with us as well. Um, what happened? So I walked out of the room that they was trying to keep me in because I was going straight mental. Like I was scaring the kids. I seen a couple of little girls crying. Like it's because it was almost like a movie. Me not being able to hold up my body and just maintain strength. Um, we I seen a couple of little girls crying. I seen a couple of little girls asking Mary, what happened? What's going on? And um, I looked in Carlo's eyes. And I was like, Carla, where's my baby? He was like, don't worry. He hugged me. He was like, we're going to find it's going to be okay. And I end up overhearing the police ex Carlo. Um, they was like, so what's your relationship with your daughter? Did you guys have an argument? He was like, I love my baby. And no, we didn't have an argument. They was asking Carlo like all of the questions because, you know, it's always the parents sometimes that's kind of doing a harm to the kids or vice versa, whatever. Um, that's because Carla wasn't emotional like me and he wasn't showing any type of um, fear, but I was, right? And um, when it was at one point, Carlo said he looked at me and he was about to like drop a tear. He said he's never seen, it was like the life got sucked out of me because like I said, I was battling demons and I'm trying to hit a Lord, battling demons, trying to hit a Lord. It was like a part of me just automatically felt like something bad happened to my baby. And uh, he and he hugged me again. It was just like, it's going to be okay. And, you know, I just walked off and the police were trying to talk to me. I'm just like, mm -mm. I, I didn't want to talk to nobody. So um, then it got really, re it got really real, real for me. They was like, what did Carla wear today? And da, 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 da. Um, and I was like, oh my God, I took a picture. It's like, you got a picture? I was like, yeah, I got a picture. The picture was so profound because it was almost like a picture of like a last memory. All the, all three of the kids back was just turned and I just snapped the photo. Um, so that was that. And, uh, 
the dean came back down and because he kept going back and forth upstairs he kept radioing everybody and he was like he's he's not bringing the um but he's going to go and talk to everybody in a building um and i was like well go go run the tapes it was just it was really bad so he ended up running the tapes he said he seen carla and the other two kids walk in the building so that brought me comfort, but then it brought me more uh, distraught because I'm like, oh, hell no. She's in this building. Y'all did something to my baby. It was really just, it was horrific. So the police were saying that they had to uh, possibly. Hey, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the police were saying that they possibly had to shut down the school um, because, you know, we couldn't find Carla so the bell ring and I'm screaming I'm looking like a whole total maniac all the kids are out it's like so many kids that's walking by seeing me have these panic attacks and all this going on and um Mary ended up running upstairs and finding the boy that Carla was walking with and she was like where he was she was like to the boy where's Carla he's like she's in class and Mary went into the class and she seen my baby and it was over from that point. Um, what happened was it was a teacher's fault. They sent my daughter to the wrong class for like a whole week. So for like a whole week, uh, not a full week, but maybe like three days, right baby? Like three days they kept sending Carla. So this was day number three. They kept sending Carla to the wrong classroom. And um, it was just really bad. And the reason why the kids wasn't answering the phone, because the high school incorporated something called phone home, where they give the teacher the phone until the class period is over. So I remember me telling the principal, my daughters would never participate in, in such foolishery ever. They would never give up their phone. And, and, you know, and that I would never be okay with them handing over their phone in the event of an emergency like this one. He was like, well, that's like nationwide and this is what we have to do. And I was just like, I don't care. This is, this is not what we going to do. He was like, well, just, um, like write a letter. It was just whatever he was saying. Just like it, it really didn't even matter because at the end of the day, we had my baby. She was like so confused and like, what's going on? What's happening? I had my sister, my brother. I had my mother, my father. Just like everybody, heart literally stopped for that moment. When my brother seen my daughter, he ended up giving her a big hug. Remember when you seen Uncle Mike? Yeah. He was so happy to see my baby, my sister and her son. Everybody was just like... It's like life stopped. It was like life paused. And I remember like after it was over, I remember Carlo telling me if he would have went in panic mode, he wouldn't have been able to come out. And he didn't want to panic. He just wanted to trust the Lord that everything was good and everything was fine. Um, that was so hard for me because when I was telling my daughters I was going to do this story time, I even cried at the restaurant. Telling I cried going back to that moment because I haven't really talked about it since I cried because I know <laughs> what it made me feel like I've never experienced that type of pain I had uh one of um a close friend of mine to be murdered and um it hurted me for years it hurted me for so long to get over that but the thing with my baby it was like my life. It, I, I told, I explained to my husband, I was like, it was like, um, I literally died. You know, it was like, I really felt like that day it was like no coming back. But anyway, the teacher ended up getting in trouble because the dean was like telling me that he's gonna um, really have a word with that teacher who had Carla in his class for those three days and Carla was not even on his roster, but he still allowed her to sit in his class, like as if she was part of the class. So that was my story time um, that happened July, 2022. And I'm just so glad. Um, that's why it's always really, really important to surround yourself around believers because um you know, even though my husband didn't fall 
fall into pieces. I had my daughter Mary there. And I also had Mary's sister, uh, Mary and Carla's sister, my oldest, Dee Dee. She was there too. She ran up to the high school. She used to go there too. Um, but anyway, um, it's always good to have believers with you and camped it around with you. Um, because if I didn't have Mary there to keep reminding me, pray, let's trust the Lord because this is what you told us to do. We need to pray. We need to believe God. We need to like start, uh, protect put the head of protection over her the angels it was like a party was like yes yes let's do it but it's like in that first five minutes of that moment i couldn't you know these people ugh, these people was putting ice down my back putting towels on my head i'm just like it was so bad like i think i was about to break one of the women arms or something because it was like too much touching and stop trying to comfort me we need to find my daughter um i really wanted to go so big with this like with the news and because the incompetent teacher who had her to sit in his class for those three days and seeing her name wasn't on his roster you know she's not in your room but you still allow this child to come in your class that part right there i was just i just expressed to the dean like he's so incompetent i don't want him to ever have any contact with my daughters because how trustworthy are you like you just let anybody come in a room and just sit and you just give anybody credit and you just whatever be on your phone and not even understanding what's going on with the kids in your class because you just don't care because it's like it's just summer it's summer and school is really over and it's just it's really not nothing anyway this is the first time this is actually a breakthrough moment for me right now because when i was telling the story with my husband uh last year even talking about it uh to my daughters at the restaurant, I cried telling Carlo about it again and how it made me feel. Um, I was we was talking on the way home from the daycare, and I I couldn't stop crying because that 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 memory and that same pain it 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 rise up back in me. Um, but I'm just I'm glad we serve of God of restoration. We serve of God of wholeness and. We serve of a God of protection. So I'm just glad um, that everything was well with my daughter. And I'm just so happy that um, the story ended up like this because once they told me my daughter was in the building, I just knew that a janitor, I'm, I'm sorry if anybody's a janitor, but that's just me. That was my brain. You know, sometimes you can't control your thoughts and what comes in your head. But I immediately uh, started pointing fingers at the janitors and it was just bad. But that's my story time. All right, bye. Say bye. That's my baby. Say bye, guys. Bye, guys. Apple said bye, too. All right, loves. Thanks for watching. Bye.